Photo editing can be a pretty subjective thing, whether you're going for a nice clean and natural looking edit, or perhaps something a little bit more stylistic or an artistic interpretation of what you saw. Whatever the case, there are some really obvious things when it comes to photo editing that can make your images more pleasing to look at and draw your attention to the right details. So in this video, I'm gonna go through some of the most common mistakes I see when it comes to photo editing, some mistakes that I'm guilty of making myself quite a bit in the past as well. Hey everyone, I'm TK North, a photographer from Sydney. I have a bunch of different Lightroom editing tutorials already on YouTube, but a slightly different one today. And one that I think is gonna be really useful. Even for me now, going back and refreshing some of these ideas is always super helpful. So let's jump in. First up is neglecting the natural luminosity and overall balance of a photo. This is perhaps the most common one. So let me explain. When we look at an image, always remember our eyes are naturally drawn to the brightest part of the photo. So this is really important to consider when editing. It also means the darker parts of our image like our shadows are equally important because these will help provide a bit of natural contrast between bright and dark and give that overall balance to an image. So having darker areas can essentially help the brighter area of our image stand out a little bit more and guide our eyes where we should be looking. So if your image is quite flat with these really bright midtones, everything in the image can just get a bit lost. You're not really drawing attention to one particular thing. So the common mistake I see is often boosting those shadows up too much. And this can just throw off the overall balance of an image and often look pretty unrealistic as well, just looking nothing like the original scene. Of course, you can always boost these darker areas a little bit and sometimes you need to, but just be careful doing it. Keep some form of reality to that original lighting of your photos. Of course, a good tool to use here is the histogram. A scene without much contrast in it, this middle spike can be perfectly fine, but just be aware we aren't always trying to achieve this. A scene with a lot of contrast in it will often have this natural spike around those shadows and then dip and then another spike towards the highlights. Another more extreme example here is this photo already has a lot of natural contrast with this bright light patch. So here's my edit actually making these darker areas even darker. So this light patch really stands out now. But again, if I was to boost the shadows right up or hit auto, you can see the overall image just isn't as appealing. To me, it's quite messy now and we aren't really drawn to anything. So just to summarize, remember the importance of both the lighter and the darker parts of a photo. Use these to balance out your images and use the histogram as a tool to help with this. Next up, avoid over editing, especially color. It can be tempting to create a nice pop of color, but sometimes it will just create a really unnatural and unrealistic photo. And yes, this was something I was quite guilty of in the past. So don't get me wrong, it is perfectly fine to manipulate color in your own artistic way. But what I like to consider is think about some of your favorite stylized movies or even photographers that really inspire you in the way they edit. So yes, they can have a really unique style and color palette when it comes to editing, but the end result, even if it is quite stylized, often still has some sense of reality to it and rarely looks too overdone. So this is quite common because it is quite hard when you're starting out to create a really unique but refined look. So just remember, always try and be really intentional with the look you're trying to create and don't overdo it. Go a little bit more subtle if you need to. To embarrass myself, here's some really old photos of mine where you can see they are very stylized, yes, but it's just not very refined and it looks very unnatural. So don't be scared of creating a unique color look, but always work on refining that down in a really thoughtful way. And remember, this will come with time and practice, so always keep working on your editing style. Next up, we have heavy-handed sharpening or the overuse of clarity. Again, this is where subtle changes can have a really nice effect on your edit, but if you push them too far, it can look really unnatural and even start to break down your image a little bit. So when it comes to sharpening, most cameras these days are already incredibly sharp. Personally, I rarely add sharpening, often going the other way even and making it slightly softer, more of a film look and even adding a bit of grain. 
Of course, the same is true for clarity. So this is one slider I would definitely suggest taking it easy on as it can start to look very unnatural. Even if adding negative clarity, which I do a lot of, be careful not to overdo it. Again, it's something I've been guilty of in the past. Next, we have not correcting your white balance, especially when using presets. So whether you use presets or not, I do see this a lot in both cases. And if you've ever used any of my presets, you'll know that none of them ever include white balance. And this is because every photo is different. It's not consistent. You will need to go and adjust this yourself. The same with exposure. White balance is really important because it can totally change the overall tone and mood of your image. When we are shooting auto white balance in camera, it can be easy to think you probably don't need to go and adjust that in post. And although auto white balance is helpful, it's really spot on. So this is why you need to adjust it. I often see with presets when you apply it and it just looks a little bit off to begin with, but really you just need to go in and adjust the white balance. We also have useful tools in Lightroom that can correct your white balance like the selector tool. So just click here, click on more of a white neutral area in the photo. It will use that information to adjust your white balance. But I always suggest just gradually sliding both the temperature and tint just slightly either direction see if it looks better or worse, make these subtle adjustments to both, and it can totally change your edit just from a couple of quick adjustments. Lastly, if you are working with presets, remember, although hopefully they are designed to work pretty well, you will get so much more out of them by making small adjustments yourself. A simple one to start with is using the amount slider, reducing if it's too heavy or even increasing it if it's a bit light. But most of all, again, just because every photo is slightly different, make sure you go in and make those slight adjustments to the tone and colors if you need to. So I love presets. I use them for pretty much all my photo editing, but mostly as a good solid base. Always go and adjust and take that edit a little bit further if you can. So number five is disregarding your composition when cropping. Of course, it's best to nail your composition in camera, but often in post, we are cropping to different ratios to suit or fit different social media platforms. And sometimes this could throw out the overall balance of your image. So really consider how you are cropping your images and whether they are still nice and balanced once you do crop in. Instagram has obviously ruined this a little bit, especially for our landscape images, but really consider what you are cropping out and also leaving in. Where possible, avoid distracting elements too close to the edge, especially as you crop down for things like Instagram, and always try and use some negative space where possible to help draw attention to different parts of your image. Of course, when cropping tools like Generative Fill in Photoshop can really be helpful if you need to slightly extend your frame, but depending on how you feel about using Photoshop, personally I do like to make subtle changes to extend a frame which can really help when cropping and there you have it hopefully you can avoid some of these common mistakes if you found this video useful please do give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe for plenty more photography videos like this one keep on creating and keep on growing my friends I will catch you in the next one or check out some of these other videos here bye for now